so good morning everyone, welcome to TEDx. So I'm gonna talk about the road less traveled. I'm an entrepreneur, right? What does that mean? I gotta do something different or I'm never gonna compete with the big guys, right? How many of you are entrepreneurs? How many of you wanna go head to head with GE? <laughs> wow, bold man, bold man, <laughs> right? All right, so economics, right? So you ask a little kid what makes the world go round? Love. Ask a physicist, <laughs> physics, right? But we all know the real truth because we're entrepreneurs, economics. Right? So here's the definition of economics. I, I snagged it from the dictionary.com. What are the operative words there? Production, distribution, consumption. The science of. Right? So out here, I'd like to, let me present this concept, right? Energy drives everything. The production of goods, raw materials plus energy. The distribution of goods, goods plus energy. Consumption of goods. When you download that Netflix movie online, you're consuming electricity during the consumption of that good, right? Energy makes everything happen. And really what that means is it's the basis of all things we do. So let me ask you a question. Could you name in, in order the top 10 GDPs on the planet by country? Who's got the biggest gross domestic product? Ooh, I, I threw you a little bit of a curveball, right? Well, you know what a really easy way to do it is? Just follow the energy. So NASA did this nice collage. This is nighttime satellite images over the, US, or over the entire globe. And really, you don't have to know what it is. You can just see the little bright points of light. Right? So you ever heard the phrase, a bright spot? Detroit is a bright spot for automotive engineering and manufacturing. Right? Well, this image right here kind of takes that phrase and gives you the literal and the figurative meaning of it. Right? Who's the number one economy? Actually, the number one largest GDP is if you take the EU and collect it together. Number two, America. Number three, China. Number four, Japan. And if you look at the picture and squint just right in the uh, kind of light we have in this room, you know what? They're the four brightest spots. Energy makes everything happen. Problem is, we've all heard in the common lexicon these days, right, that it's unsustainable, right? We've heard things like peak oil. Hmm, we're using oil faster then we're finding new sources of oil. That's a problem, right? That means someday we're gonna fall off the top of that curve and we're, we're gonna have a problem. There's not gonna be enough of it. Global warming, Al Gore so eloquently put it, right? Put the fear into all of us that we're screwing with our planet's climate. Growing demand, you can look up the Energy Information Agency in the Department of Energy and they can give you the projections for 20, between now and 2030. Energy consumption is gonna increase by 44%. It never stops. Why? Because energy is economics. And everybody wants more stuff. Or use more stuff. Or transport more stuff. Right? And it's so common these days that somebody like Thomas Friedman has actually coined a new phrase. Energy technology. Right? Information technology. Ugh, so last decade, right? The new ones, energy technology. How are we going to get all this energy to all these people so they can do all their stuff? Right? Making things, distributing things, or consuming things. Quick power and energy calibration. Power and energy is a little scary, right? You've ever heard of the term order of magnitude? That's times 10, right? There's one of me up here. There's two orders of magnitude of you out there, 100 people, right? Well, here's the, pro here's the challenge with energy. It spans such a huge spectrum. The United States consumes about 10 terawatts every day, entire country, right? A single coal-fired electric plant generates about a gigawatt. A megawatt is about a medium-sized hospital. Kilowatts, your car makes about 50 to 100 kilowatts, right? Down to one watt, that's your iPhone 3G downloading some cool video, right? And down in the milliwatt level, it's like a wristwatch or something really small, right? Whew, that's a big problem or a big opportunity, right? I'm a positive, positive optimistic kind of guy. So let's look at this. Entrepreneur, I see opportunity. Let's go get some, right? So how can we look at this from an economic sense to capture the best opportunity for energy? So let's start with gigawatts, right? Because any statistic, statistician will tell you the most economical use of statistics is tell a venture capitalist that if, if they give you $10 million, you'll capture 0.83% of a trillion dollar market, right? That's the best way to do it. That's the best use of numbers. But, eh, it's a little scary, right? You know what? They build a power plant every 30 years. It takes billions and billions of dollars. And the market size really is they only sell a few thousand units a year. It's kind of small. 
And at the end of the day, we're talking about capital expenditures on the order of things like, you know, a single coal-fired power plant. Did you know that that consumes 100 railroad cars of coal a day? Truly astounding, right? One guy in a garage? No, <laughs> right? Never going to compete. So what's the next layer down? Michigan, let's talk about cars. Awesome. So now we're in the kilowatt size range. It sounds like a reasonable number. We all know kilowatts, right? Well, so you take a small size sedan, they can build the entire engine and drivetrain for about 1500 bucks. Toyota, Honda, GM, Nissan, Renault, all those guys are pursuing battery hybrids, hybrid technology, fuel cell cars. Whew. And at the end of the day, the adoption rate for a car, eh, once every three to five years. So young entrepreneur, brand new product. You can't afford to wait that long and get your product to market. So how can you get there faster? Toys. Well, electronic tools used for business productivity, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> so now you're down in the watts level. So like a few watts is a laptop. I'd like to point out here, this is a IBM slash Lenovo laptop. <laughs> if you push the arrow keys, it scrolls to the presentation. Um, versus Apple, evil, right? Um, but on the order of, right? This is the power consumption your devices have. This is exciting. They adopt new things, new toys. Who bought a new electronic gadget in the last six months? Uh-huh. Steve Jobs welcomes you. Price, upwards of thousands of dollars, right? Who bought the new 3G Apple phone when it first came out and paid with full retail? Uh-huh. Yeah, shame on you, right? Market size, hundreds of millions of things. Now that's opportunity, right? You can screw that one up and still sell a million of something. But the problem is, is it's crowded. Where's the opportunity? Well, let's see if we can find a sweet spot in the middle, right? So kilowatts is a little outside of my comfort zone. Milliwatts and watts is owned by the electronics company. I'm not going to compete with Sony and Apple and all those guys. But there's this little underserved segment that exists. And what we call it is too small for engines and too big for batteries. And it's this idea of, well, what if you could miniaturize the power generation and carry that with you, right? Kind of a novel concept. You don't have to carry batteries, which store somebody else's electricity for you and carry the battery around and then use electricity later. Why don't you just carry the power generator with you and use it directly, right? So who might want to do that? Well, I'll use a very relevant and <coughs> example and one that's probably um, very, very easy to understand. If you talk to Jim Stone, he's the deputy director of the infantry, US Army Infantry Center, right? They've got a problem. In Afghanistan, there are about this many paved roads, right? That means all their operations, the guys walk. So here you go. I'm going to hand you 80 pounds of gear. Ammo, weapons, electronic gadgets, sensors, gear, right? Food, water. And then, here's the deal. Every 72 hours, a 12-man squad has to carry nine different kinds and sizes of batteries. Over 20, almost 2,600 individual batteries, just 12 guys, weighing 364 pounds and costing $10,000, right? 12 people, 364, can anybody do the math real quick? 30 pounds, right? I'm handing 80 pounds of stuff to get your job done and I'm throwing another 30 pounds on top of you. Wow. And it, oh, by the way, Afghanistan, you know, the, one of the most mountainous chunks of the world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh-huh, Midwesterners don't always appreciate that. You know, there's opportunity, right? There's a price target, there's a performance target. What can you do with it? Well, why are they stuck in this situation? It's because batteries really, they're like the warehouse model, right? They take somebody else's good, electron, electricity, they store it and distribute it, and you carry it with you. Right? And the ultimate, or the ultimate metric in energy storage is how much energy, watt hours, you can carry as a function of weight. And the military, I'll tell you right now, has some of the best batteries on the planet. You can make fun of the military all you want for their $300 toilet seats. Their batteries are really good. So that's a really good battery. Okay? So what we did at our particular company, and this is my one little advertisement, excuse me, is came up with, well, what happens if we could take a generator and shrink it down small enough to be carried with you? and give the guy a little bit of fuel, a small generator, and can you get a better metric? Can you miniaturize that? And what we came up with was a solution that's 850 watt hours per kilogram. So you can carry 170 in batteries or 850 in fuel cell and fuel. That's five times lighter. You're a grunt. You look at a 30 pound, pound, 30 pound pile of batteries or six pounds of fuel cell and fuel. 
right? How awesome is that? That kind of makes sense, right? Makes it very tangible. Because power and energy is really hard to understand because anybody ever felt an electron? <laughs> right? Seen an electron? You don't, ah. It's hard to understand what those numbers are. But this is the, this is the opportunity. Energy, power and energy, alternative energy, all the things we talk about, all it is is conversion, right? So, uh, let's, let's play a game, right? I dig a lump of coal out of the ground, right? I then take that lump of coal and put it on a train. The train moves it across the country and goes to a power plant. That power plant takes the coal out and burns it, does a whole bunch of things, makes steam, spins a turbine, creates a generator, makes electricity. That electricity then goes into the grid. The grid moves the electricity around the country all over the place, right? Okay. The grid hooks up to the battery company. The battery company takes a bunch of that electricity, uses some of that electricity to produce their goods, production, <coughs> uses some of that electricity to charge the battery, and then that battery goes on a truck. The truck drives all over the country, drops the battery off. You put the battery into your laptop, cell phone, iPhone, whatever, right? Oh my God, right? <laughs> if energy is economics, well, I mean, if energy is economics, then the corollary applies as well. Economics decisions are the driving force for energy decisions. I mean, who would deal with a logistics change like that in any of your products that you produce today? That's just silly, right? So what if we could do this, right? You take a little tank of fuel, let's say propane. Love propane, it's everywhere, it's all over the world, it's cheap. It's readily available, right? I take one tank of propane, comes out of a well, pipeline takes it to a factory, they put it in a can. Right? The can goes on a truck. Truck drives all the way to you, hands you a tank of propane. You put it in your little generator, and suddenly you have your own energy right then, right there on the spot. How cool is that? And oh, by the way, remember the metric? How many trucks of propane do I have to put on the road versus trucks of batteries? Remember the soldier example? Help me out, come on. You guys got to laugh at me for a long time. Least I can do is get you to do some. Yeah, one sixth, one fifth, right? Five trucks, one truck. Woo, less trucks on the road. That's better logistics. Everything gets better, right? So power and energy is really just a game of, <laughs> actually it's just a game of economics, right? It's the shell game of I'll take this and move this and do that to it and process it and pass it along. It's all about conversion. So what's next, right? The soldier example is pretty, pretty simple. Let me paint another picture for you that's really interesting is this concept of wired for war. Anybody ever seen a robot? Robots are cool, aren't they? <laughs> right? And they're awesome, and they play a great role because they're the next generation. Right? We've taken computing from mainframes down to little chips, right? Your iPhone does more than, oh god, you could launch 10 missions to the moon with an iPhone computing power, right? <laughs> well, take that back, with an IBM device. <laughs> <laughs> Because I want to be able to come home. I don't know. What reliability. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> I apologize for that one. Uh, but what it comes down to, right, is we've miniaturized the computing power. We've got the information storage. That's miniaturized. We've got the communications, right? That's miniaturized, low power. Cell phones can download anything you want these days. What's next? Well, now you want to interact with the world. And what lets you do that? Robots. So in the military, this is the next big thing. So this is an aircraft carrier. The United States spent eh, $800 billion last year on defense, more than the rest of the planet combined. And we can only afford to float about 10 of those with all the support structure. That's how expensive they are, right? Well, imagine if you're a little small country. Really? I could build myself a little robotic airplane, throw that baby up in the air, and get all the information I need, right? Global Hawk flies six miles above the Earth. Can you imagine a camera that can take a picture of you from six miles away accurately? That's expensive. A little airplane, 1,000 feet away? A little Nikon camera from Best Buy will do that. It's a big game changer. Suddenly you get all the capabilities of a big F-35 sitting on top of that carrier and something the guy throws on the, from the top of the hill. Kind of exciting. Uh huh. So that's a military example. Kind of boring, right? Eh. Where's the commercial opportunity? Oh, wait. What's the, what's the advantage? Why, what's, the big, what's the big win? Well, to put things in perspective, when you start to actuate, interact with the world, move, touch, feel, impart force, right? Wow, that takes a lot of power. 
So there's a robot that exists that works with the US military. It goes out and disposes of improvised explosive devices. So you can send one of your sons forward. He can go dig in the ground and see if that thing's going to blow up. Or you can send one of these robots. Simple decision, right? But here's the deal. They run on batteries today because it's only this big. It's too small for an engine, but it really turns out to be too big for a battery as well. It consumes too much power and energy. So if you put a battery on this robot and run it, it runs for 37 minutes. We put a fuel cell on one and ran it for 12 hours, right? And the same with a small little unmanned aircraft, about 90 minutes on a battery, 10 hours on a fuel cell. That's the big game changer. And that's the difference between, right, digging that lump of coal, process, 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 process handing you a battery at the end, or take the fuel, send the fuel up front, and run it through a miniaturized generator. And that's what's exciting. So those are a lot of military examples. What's a commercial example? So, I love irrational purchasing decisions, <laughs> right? So for me, the epitome of that is the $5 latte from a, you know, not to be named coffee shop, right? Or anybody shop at Whole Foods? <laughs> oh, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, hands down, right? Because it is, I mean, it's, trust me, the food's great, I love all that stuff, but at the end of the day, you pay a very much so price premium to shop at a, an experience, right? Well, this is a great example. One of the earliest robots that came out, they sold over two and a half millions of these things. I've seen the gold-plated one in the lobby of iRobot. It's pretty cool, right? They're celebrating their two millionth iRobot Roomba. It's a little vacuum. It runs around and cleans up cat fur and debris on the ground. But guess what it runs on? Guess how long it runs? Mm -hmm. And this is a great example of a product that doesn't suck enough. <laughs> Come on, that's a good, that was good, right? <laughs> but imagine if you can get the generation on board something like this, and now you can suck more, right? It's that next, I gotta have some tagline you guys will remember at the end of all this, right? Um, that's what's exciting, is this idea of bringing power and energy generation down to the level of the individual, right? Make it small, make it be interactive, make it be something you can interact with. And so kind of my hypothesis and what really gets me passionate, the entrepreneurial opportunities in alternative energy will grow exponentially as power generation technologies are miniaturized to the level of the individual. Mainframe computers, <coughs> laptops, right? Coal fire plant or nuclear plant or big solar array out in Nevada, carry it with you. And that's kind of what gets me all jazzed up and excited and why I'm happy to be here at TEDx today. So thank you very much for your time.